so these these are these are three topics we need to read today okay so till now we did basics now today onwards we go for some advanced topics in ad okay so uh, we start with overview of active overview of advanced ads deployments okay so uh, if you're talking about the if you're talking about the advanced things in this so what we need to do we need to understand uh, see we need to understand some some things over there okay so once i open my ms paint i just minimize this one open my ms paint Okay, so uh, start this the first option. Okay, so our topic is uh, ADS Advanced Deployment. Okay. Now, what what we read in this? We read number one. Uh, we read in this that uh, that uh, number one, number one. We read this over there is domain boundaries. D O M A I N domain boundaries. Okay, domain boundaries and forest boundaries. Okay, this is the number one we need to read. Okay, so uh, we start with the with the domain boundaries. Domain boundary uh, boundaries is what? Now, what is the meaning of boundaries over there in our in our AD environment? Boundary means is boundaries is to uh, uh, a physical location where we not where uh, till till that we able to uh, uh, you can say that till that we able to access the network. Not more than that. Like when you make any uh, any home or any house, you have a boundary that you are not able to go beyond that okay so that is what we have in in ad also we have a boundaries okay so if you're talking about the domain boundaries or forest boundaries we have some uh, you can say that we have some replication over there i already told you we have we are working on the replications because if we have a multiple domain networks so in that replication is the services who update the ad database between the multiple domain networks like if you have pdc and cdc okay so pdc replicate to cdc and cdc replicate to pdc in that case okay so that is the boundary we have so replication has has a boundaries boundaries is that that they where they reach the where the application is reach it's reach within the forest only or within the domain only the replication works in two ways either we can, either we can go for within the domain or either we can go for within the forest so we're talking about the within the forest within the forest means like in your organization like in my organization i have three or four domain networks so all domain networks are replicated with each other are sync with each other okay in that case uh, all application has or uh, all uh, domain has uh, a similar updates with them okay so this is what boundary it is the boundaries is that the replication where we in boundaries we we, uh, we always under we, we can also they say that it's a replication boundary that where we can replicate our domains replication boundary okay we know you and the boundary okay so uh, replication boundary means that where you can replicate the way we you want replication within the network or within the forest or across the forest also these are three boundaries in the replication okay fine so uh, this is what we have number second we have uh, Number second, we have administration boundary also. Administration means administration boundary means like where where one of one of my administrator is able to manage. I have domain admins also. 
I told you we have three types of admins: domain admins, enterprise admins, schema admins. Okay, we have three types of admins. Domain admins is able to domain admins is, is able to um, uh, manage only a particular domain where it's worked from. Understood? Okay. Schema enterprise admins are able to manage all over the forest. Like if my if in if uh, if uh, in my forest I have uh, ten domain networks, so the enterprise admin is able to manage all ten networks. Okay, but domain admin is able to manage their own network. They are not able to manage the other networks. Schema admin is able to manage schema. Like like if I want to modify schema, if I want to edit schema, so that in that case we can uh, use which which admin schema admin. Okay. Yeah, like like if if I if I if I want that you are able to manage schema, so I I I give you the rights of schema admin that case. Okay. Now third one we need to understand in that is uh, group policy boundary. Then in the same case also where you want to apply the group policy within a domain network or outside the domain network or all over the forest. So we can apply group policy on three ways. Like right now imagine I am working on my parent domain network. Okay. I am getting one policy. Now I want to apply the policy in only parent domain network. Or I want to apply the policy to other domain networks also with the help of parent domain network. Okay, so we can do this also. So we can design these things. Okay, when we uh, you can see that when we go for uh, when we when we planning or when we deploying anything, so we need to understand these these three to four things. Okay, find the last one. We need to understand is uh, the last one we need to understand is. Password, password and uh, account policies. Policy boundaries. Okay. So password and account policies. Policies means that like uh, like you know that when I am creating any any user account in my domain network, we need to give the password. It's mandatory. Okay, if I am not giving the password, we are not able to get the we are not able to get the user accounts in that case. Okay, so that password is minimum seven characters by default. Seven. Seven characters. Okay. okay, it's a minimum length. Seven characters and a complexity is there. Okay, but this is the boundary you can say that less than seven characters we are not able to give them. Okay, so, so you can change the boundary also with the help of this password account policies. I can I can uh, modify this also that I need only three characters, I need four characters, I need ten characters, I need fourteen characters like this. Okay, so uh, by default the boundary is seven character. If I'm if I'm not uh, giving seven character to my pa in my password, so I'm not able to. Uh, so your domain is not able to accept the password. We need to give seven characters minimum, and the password should be complex. Complex means like we need to give alphabetical, numerical, and special vectors. And I said these things. Okay, so this is the first uh, uh, question we need to understand. Okay, now second question is why why we implement why we uh, implement you you tell me the answer. I think you know this answer. I you know this question. <laughs> I know think so. Uh, why we implement multiple domains? Now, tell me why we implement multiple domains. I just have to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, safety to have backup. Please. Yeah. Okay. Number one, you can give the backup. You can have this. We have the safe safety and anything else. You know something about uh, why we implement multiple domains. Uh, okay. It it can uh, it allows us to for the management. Yeah. Okay. To centralize. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anything else? You are going on good. It's okay. See, uh, if if you go for multiple domains, so I already told you. Like uh, remember one thing that that if I if I talk, if talking about the multiple domains, but why we multiple domains? Why because if uh, like if I have multiple physical locations, so in that case we need multiple domains. Why because if one of my location is down, so they don't affect to other locations. Understood. Yeah. So uh, so it's 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 up to me. That how we can implement the multiple domains. Either I can go for same way database. I continue the same way database to all the multiple domains, or I can con or or I can uh, separate a different different database. Or if I if I want to separate different different database, so what 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 domain controller we need, or what domain we are going to go for that? 
if you want to control if i if i am not uh, continuing my same database like i want to okay p, uh, my parent domain uh, domain network is a separate database and other domain network is a separate database okay. so what domain network we use in that uh, case we can use adc adc or child or cdc no not cdc with cdc uh, cdc and uh, cdc okay you can go for cdc but it has a different database. Yeah, that's why I told you. If I want to discontinue my database, okay. in that case, you can go for child domain control. No, 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 no. Child domain network. Okay. If I if I continue my database, in that case, you can go for yeah. additional, additional or backup domain controllers. Okay. So why the, the question is that why implement multiple domains? Why? Because for number one, we need security. Okay. So it go for you can say that it, we can offer have a security. We need security. Number second, what we need. Uh, if I, if I go for uh, multiple domains, we have different different DNS namespace. Now you know what is DNS namespace. Namespace means like if I am if I am implementing parent domain, so my parent domain name is set.com. So it's a namespace set.com. Okay. Now uh, if I am using child domain, so in that case we have child.set.com. So the namespace is different in that case. Okay. So if we need different namespaces, in that case we can go for multiple domain networks okay so this is for dns namespace requirements if you, if you need multiple dns namespace requirements okay i want that okay for every site i need different dns namespace so in that case we need to go for multiple domain networks okay or multiple domains in the network okay so like this now <clears throat> third question we have uh, why we implement implement uh, multiple forest multiple forest now forest mean what now what is the meaning of multiple forest over there forest you know that forest is a combination of more than one domain a more than one tree 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 so tree is a different thing so i am talking about the forest right now so forest means organization the whole organization is known as forest. So the, the question is that why, why we implement multiple forests? Multiple forest means what? That why we implement multiple organizations in that case? If, if you have multiple organizations yeah. outside of this same Yeah, so, so yeah, like like imagine you can say that like we have we have multiple uh, two organizations. So for, for in that case we have some collaboration and maybe we have some collaboration maybe uh, we, we go for some collaboration so in that case we need to go for multiple organizations or multiple forest okay uh, uh, sometimes we can go for a multinational requirements also in that case like we have multinational requirements okay my one of my company uh, is in india one of mine in, in uk one of mine in us so in that case also we need to go for multiple forest you can say it's a multiple forest when you go for multiple trees, in that case, we can go for multiple forests also. Okay, so uh, for multinational requirements, for for security reasons, for business uh, uh, business requirements, we need to implement multiple forests in that case. Okay, so only three things we need to understand in this. Okay, number one, why we go for for multinational requirements? For multinational requirements, if you want to if you want to uh, open your company in many multi, in in, the, in in different different countries. So in that case, we need to go for multinational requirements. Okay, number second, we can go for uh, uh, number second, we can go for uh, you can say that security security requirements, some security we need, some extra security we need. So we can go for in that case, we can go for security requirements. And number third, we go for business requirements. Business means you want your you you uh, extend your business in different different countries, or different different cities, or different different states. So in that case, we can go for. Uh, business requirements we need okay business requirements like this so this is the these four three major components and the last one we understand this is that we need maybe we need a uh, 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 incompatible schema incompatible uh, now what is the meaning of incompatible schema is schema. incompatible schema schema incompatible schema means like like imagine uh, I have I have a one uh, a one um, network. It's in it's in Delhi. Okay. Now I have a network. It's in it's in UK. I want to I want to modify schema in UK. I want I want to give some different different things in UK. I want to give some different changes. Okay. So in that case we can 
uh, open uh, another uh, uh, location and over there we can test and try the schema in that case okay like what uh, what we can modify why, why we can modify schema like imagine that if you see uh, the user account properties over there there is no photograph is there there is no photo option is there na? i have one photo option in also in the, in the properties so what i need to do i just add or add attributes if i want to add attributes if i want to add classes means if i want to add the tabs if i want to add any information in that case we can use schema okay you can see that in 2016 we have so many changes so how how are they becoming those changes with the help of modifying schema understood okay so like this we need to understand the things so this is what we have some things to understand okay now very cool feature that gives you uh, in in uh, in your 6 to 3, 2012 onwards you can say that 2012 onwards they have a cloud in in, in our servers okay so uh, we have one thing also deploying uh, domain controllers deploying a domain controllers in azure you know what is azure you heard about azure of course i heard about it but it does not okay so uh, what is the meaning of azure azure is a is a uh, you can say that it's a it's a cloud platform given by the microsoft azure is a cloud platform given by the microsoft like uh, you heard about google drive OneDrive. These are the cloud platforms. Google given by your uh, Google Drive is for Google. OneDrive is for Microsoft. Azure also gives by the Microsoft. Now, what is the meaning of IaaS? IaaS is uh, Infra uh, as a services. Infra as a services. Okay. So Infra as a services, like uh, if you, if you're talking about the cloud. So cloud gives you uh, now. The meaning of cloud is what is that? Like we have one centralized location over there. We have all the data are saved okay so what gives what cloud gives you cloud gives you a centralized location like imagine i have a very small company now i want some servers okay but i don't have that much i don't have that much money i don't have that much budget to give to make the servers okay so what i need to do i just uh, i just go for any cloud uh, cloud provider like we have isp intent service providers same as we have a csp cloud service providers Okay, so I, I go for Microsoft and tell Microsoft, okay, please give me uh, two virtual servers or please give me five virtual servers. Okay, so for per hour basis, I can give the payment to you. Okay, so uh, now in our servers, we have cloud and moment also. So if you, if, 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 uh, if uh, in your company, you have cloud and moment, so uh, we can manage all those uh, all if you have if you in your company you have cloud and moment so we can manage those cloud and moment with the help of azure also and we can manage our internal environment also with the help of cloud also okay like in your like in your office you have internal servers we can purchase four, four, four to five servers physically in your in your office mm -hmm. now you have your cloud and environment also you can purchase some uh, uh, virtual servers to the to azure okay. with, the, with the microsoft like your private cloud yeah my private clouds i have you can see that i have a private my private cloud so now I, now i want i want to manage with my private cloud i want to manage my internal network so we can do that with the help of azure Okay, infra as a services. IaaS means infra as a services. Azure basically is a cloud. Yeah, Azure is a, is a uh, platform of cloud. Microsoft provides you Azure. Okay, so with the help of Azure, you can uh, make your own cloud also. You can you can provide some cloud services also to the to other other companies also. Okay, so like this, we have so cloud has three in uh, three services. Infra as a services. Okay, cloud has mean mostly three three services. Number one is. Uh, you can say that IaaS infra as the services. Okay. Number second, we have uh, SaaS. I'm sorry. S A S A A S. Okay. S A A S. Okay. Software as the services. Okay. Software as the services. Okay. And number third one, we have. What else we have? Infra software and application maybe. Application maybe something here. Application A double A S maybe maybe I'll just check once. Oh, sorry, platform as services P double A S. Okay, so we have three services: infra services, 
software services and platform as services so if you want anything you want platform like imagine you want a uh, platform means how uh, microsoft uh, as you all give you platform platform means that which operating system you want like i want microsoft platform i want microsoft servers i want linux platform i want linux servers okay i want 32 bit platform i want 62 64 bit platform like this so platform means like what platform you want to need okay software as service means what softwares you need like imagine you have you have development uh, team okay over there you want c++ java .net servers or you want sql servers database services so then you can go for so software as services infra means like how many machines you want okay how many servers you want infra as services infra as services software as services and platform as services the first one tells you how many servers do you need yeah how many uh, uh, means uh, system you need infra infra means infrastructure like ad infrastructure is what the servers systems network devices cables the other infrastructure of, of ad uh, sorry infrastructure structure of your it right okay. it infrastructure is what this is this is what na servers i uh, hardware and all cables and all the things ports okay so these are the it infrastructure we have now if you go for softwares so what softwares we need like java dot net for programming Okay, uh, we need PowerShell for for scripting. Like we have CSVD, LDFD for scripting tools for automation. Okay, so these are the softwares. Means we need uh, SQL database. We need Oracle. These are the softwares. Now platform. What we need? What is a platform? Platform means what platform you want to use? Microsoft platform, Linux platform, Sun Solaris. Okay, or uh, some Apple platform you want. Okay, so these are the services provided by the provided by any CSP provider. It's not only Microsoft. any csp provider yes. we have csp yes. service means cloud service providers so we have so many we have google also we have vmware also csp yeah. google vmware microsoft we have so many service providers are there okay so every amazon also amazon you can say that amazon web services aws but this is also this is also a cloud uh, uh, services okay so whatever you want you can give when you purchase any cloud services you need to uh, uh, purchase per hour you can say that okay like imagine i can purchase two vms from from uh, from microsoft i tell them okay please give me two vm i give the given i give the uh, requirement also that i need uh, 16 gb vm i need 32 gb vm i need 1 uh, terabyte of the gb of vm a 1 terabyte uh, ram vm okay so i need what what we need they, we need to give the all the hardware requirements also okay so they gives me okay and then when i on my vm my billing starts like if i use the use that vm in 5 hours in a day so i need to pay only for 5 hours okay it's it's for hour basis okay remember these things and in cloud when you purchase anything your bill starts after 24 hours after purchasing 24 hours like today morning 10 am you can purchase something okay you can purchase one vm imagine okay and tomorrow 10 am onward onwards tomorrow 10 am onwards your bill starts Okay, so they give you like twenty-four hours free. Yeah, you can say that after twenty-four hours they start your bills. Okay, so like if you want to say if you want if you want some change if you want to do something so you can change it also. Okay, so the like this. Okay, so we have these three services: IAS, SAS, SAS, and PAS. Okay, so now two thousand two thousand twelve onwards you can say that you can say two thousand twelve onwards my we uh, we already installed. Uh, Microsoft Cloud Services in our in our servers. Okay. okay, so you can see that if I am showing you, uh, like if I minimize these things, or I open my server, so you can see that we have Cloud Services which is automatically installed. See over there, you can see that 2012 onwards, Microsoft here. Yeah, see Microsoft is your services. So if I have my personal cloud, or if I am purchasing some something in my cloud. so with the help of this server we can manage all those cloud services and sir for this we need we need to uh, if i if i open it so we need to we need uh, we need subscription for this license license okay i know they don't have like if i go for open internet explorer so they they log give me the page where i need to give the username and password so so where i need to give username password why because uh, for that i give the 
सब्सक्रिप्शन फर्स्ट सो बाई डिफॉल्ट माइक्रोसॉफ्ट गिव्स यू सिक्सटी डेज सब्सक्रिप्शन फ्री इट्स अ फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट सॉरी थर्टी डेज में भी You can extend to 60 days, not more than that. So 30 days is the subscription, free subscription is there. So you can uh, uh, you can check the services. If you like it after 30 days, you can pay and you can add your subscription as per the as per the requirements you need. Okay, understood these things. Okay, like same Amazon also they gives you some free subscriptions. Uh, okay, so every uh, com every company they gives you 30 days free and after 30 days you can start pay, uh, paid. Paying. Okay, if you if you like it, if you don't like it, you can simply go that. Okay, I don't want to go for this. Okay, so that is what we have. Understood? Okay. Now, uh, after can you activate the mouse? Because sometimes when I'm showing on the videos, mm -hmm. I can see mouse is there. No, like for here it it shows what. Okay, okay, but in recording, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Where it's activate over there? Maybe they were there also. Yeah. This one, yeah, okay. not activating, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so that's that's uh, uh, what we have the cloud services. Okay. Now, after that, what uh, what we uh, what we need to understand now, what is the meaning of complex AD deployment? The the another question. This is what this is the third one or fourth one? This is the fourth question. Fourth one. So fourth one is uh, managing. <coughs> objects Sorry. objects in complex areas deployment okay mm -hmm. now what's the meaning of complex ad a complex ad deployments complex means like if you have uh, if you have uh, uh, multiple domain networks in your in your organization okay multiple, multiple domain networks or or uh, if you have multiple uh, dns namespaces okay so in that case uh, how we can manage the user accounts you already know that we have we have two things you already know that we have two tools okay number one is active Directory, users and computers, right? Let me remember the second one. Second one, yeah. Let you remember. Directory. Yes, active directory. Is it the first one that if you open it shows? Yeah. 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 First one, first one is <laughs> first option. Yeah, the first. Active. Yeah, the first option. Active directory. You don't remember? Administrative. Administrative center. Administrative center. Administrative center. Okay. So these are the by default two tools we have. Okay. With the help of this, we can what what we can do. What we able to do with the help of this, with the help of these tools, what we able to do, we able to uh, manage user management. We can able to do user management in that. We can create, delete, modify users. Okay, uh, but uh, we can go for group management. M A M A G M A group management. Okay, number third. Other things we can do. Apply policies. Yeah, uh, no, and those those tools. Ah, okay. Those we can go for OU management. Okay, we can create OUs. Remember, we can do. Yeah, uh, day before yesterday maybe. Yeah, organization. Okay, organization unit. Yeah, definitely. Manage. Okay, so these are the major tasks we can do with the help of these tools. Okay, user user management uh, groups man group management. We can create modified lead groups. We can create modified lead user accounts. Okay, we can create modified lead OUs. Okay, so this is the management we can do with the help of this. Understood these things? Okay, fine. Now the last one we need to understand is uh, okay. I open another point. The last one we need to understand is that I think we already read this also. Maybe you heard about these things. This one is ADS domain functional levels. Functional level. Functional. 
you know functional levels remember when we are creating uh, when we configuring your uh, when we configuring adds when we creating when we promoting our server to a domain controller so in that case we have function levels yeah the, that one is the two function level is the one is domain function level domain functional functional level and second one is forest function level remember so what is it means means is what like <coughs> the function level means what function level means what type of what uh, uh, type of servers you want in your in your network like have you seen the options over the 2002 2008 r2 2008 2012 2016 some options are there remember okay so when we go for those options yeah so so if i if i if i if i uh, like imagine over there i can set over there windows server 2008 r2 okay and over there i can set in forest i can set windows server 2008 so what does it means that from the we can implement windows 2008 coming uh, like going up yeah means we means we can we can use 2008 r2 r2 onward servers in the, in my present domain but in my forest we can use 2008 r8 r1 onwards understood but if my but if i'm using in my forest like imagine if forest one is a is a primary one if i if i am going for if i'm going for over there is windows server 2016 or 2012 in my forest so in any domain network i'm not able to use 2008 now because i i mentioning in my forest that in my organization i am only used 2012 onward servers function level I'm not able to use 2008 and 2008 R2 in any domain function, in any domain uh, network. In that, after that, okay. But instead of I go for posit, like imagine what I do, I am mentioning over there 2012, but over there I can use Windows Server 2008. So in what in, in that case, what they uh, what they trying to trying to say it in do in file function level. In this forest, in this organization, we are start with 2008 onwards. But in the present domain, which I'm working, like in, imagine that in PDC or, or in CDC, I can mention over the 2012 server. So it means in my child domain network, I am only use 2012-2016 servers. I'm not able to use 2000 less than 2012 servers. Understood. But rest of all the other uh, domain networks, we able to use 2008 R1 or R2 onwards. Okay, fine. So we have function levels. So this is the function. We, you, remember this when you're creating your your parent domain controller. Or when you when you're going to create your parent domain network, remember these things also that uh, your function level should be on very least, low. very low, because you raise the function level one time it's okay, but you're not able to decrease the function level. Once if I set 2012, it means I'm not able to come back to 2008 now. So you have to reset everything. You to format everything. You need to delete everything, and then you can go for that. Means you need to destroy your uh, the domain controllers, and then you can recreate it again. Oh. In that case, yeah. So we only raise the function levels. We're not able to decrease the function levels. Remember these things. Okay. Understand these things, sir? Yes. We already discussed about upgrading process. Upgrade. Yeah, we upgrade means the servers. Yeah, server 2012 to 16. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we can did now already upgrading shit. We can upgrade the. Uh, we can we can up upgrade our. Uh, um, say that we can upgrade our DCs also. Remember those things. Okay. Like if we're talking about the DCs, uh, like number second we have upgrade. We have need to understand this, these things. Upgrade and migrate. Upgrade and migrating. Upgrading and migrating DCs. Upgrading and migrating. 
Now, what is the meaning of upgrading and migrating DCs? Now, we already discussed about the schema. You know, yes. we already discussed about the schema. The schema has a number, member. It. Schema has a version. Every schema has the version. Okay. So, uh, like, if I showing you one list, once we start this topic, before I showing you one list, to open. Just give me one minute. Just connect. So this is the list of schema versions. It starts with the 2000 server. It starts with 13. Then 3 is 30. Then R2 it is the 3 to Windows server 2003 R2 in 31. Then 44, 47, 56, 69, 87. So right now we are working with 87. So 2016 version. Understood. Okay, so uh, like if I if I tell you that uh, that what we need to understand in this that if I if I want to see the versions like we have the with the help of registry we can see the version also with the help of registry we have we have a registry in our in our uh, uh, Windows editions registry okay. registry is what like uh, it saves all the information about about your uh, operating system about your uh, uh, hardware about uh, everything. Okay. okay, even even your services also. Like right now, I'm installing DSCP, DNS, ADA services. So it's all all information uh, are saving about in the in the registry. What we what we are doing in the in this particular hardware, all the things are saved in the registry also. Okay. So if you want to check my schema version right now, so how we can check it with the help of this. This is uh, uh, the parameters. You can say this this is the uh, path in the registry where we can check the schema versions so how we can check it is showing you like see if i uh, if i like sometimes if we, if we don't know what is my schema version so i need to check it over there this is the path so where do you need to check the version of the scheme like okay i let you know how much one then i go for that okay so why why i'm checking you why checking I, I want to check this like if i go for there so if i want to upgrade like imagine if i want to upgrade my dc if I want to upgrade my DC, like imagine how we can upgrade my DC. Like imagine if I open my another paint, like this is again, this is imagine this is my DC. Okay, this is my DC, and I am installing this DC in my uh, this is my uh, server 2012. Okay, mm -hmm. and and I get this server in a DC. Okay, now what I want. Now I want this. Uh, I want uh, 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 to install Server 2016 in this. Okay. I want to upgrade uh, my DC also. Okay. Like if I if I'm going to install 2016 directly, so what happens in that case? If you want to install directly, so, so what happens? My DC is lost because it's formatting everything. Yeah. Okay. So what I need to do? I need to first uh, uh, upgrade my schema in that case. So schema is what schema has a version number. So if you if you if I want to upgrade my DC, okay. So first, what I need to do. First, what I need to do, I need to like right now. Uh, if I, if I'm using 2012 R2, so in that case, I'm using 69 version. Okay. So if I want to upgrade my DC, first I need to upgrade my schema. Okay. Okay. So my my number should be 87 in that case. Before, Before upgrading DC, okay. I need to upgrade my schema. So, so once I get my schema, after that I can upgrade my uh, OS. So if you upgrade your OS, it doesn't upgrade the schema. Yeah, exactly. That is the that is the con condition. Understood. Schema first. Previously we we can do because because that time we are not able to, we not get any DC and everything. It's a work group, it's a standalone machine. Then we can go for that. It's okay. But if if I if I want to upgrade my DC, so number one, I need to first upgrade my schema, and then I need to upgrade the OS. OS. Understood. Yeah. Fine. So, uh, like, if I, if I don't know what is my schema number, and I want to check what what schema number I am using right now. So, this is the uh, you can select location. You need to check. So, how we can check it? So, I just open my ABC and the right. So, I just open my server. So, over there, if I want to open my registry, so the command is 
reg edit this is the command to open registry okay reg edit click on okay and this is the registry we have see registry editor we have we open in that case reg edit okay it is used to open registry okay Okay, registry editor. When you open uh, reg edit, okay. When you hit, uh, when you run command reg edit and click on enter, then registry editor is open in that case. Registry editor means where we can uh, where we can modify the registry. But I give you one warning. Mm -hmm. When we uh, open registry, okay, don't go for anything. Don't go for any modification. Okay. If you do any modification, if it's not compatible with the without present operating system so operating system is automatically corrupted okay fine so if you have a full knowledge of registry then you can able to modify anything okay so if you really watch then uh, we just we just uh, like if i want to see something then we can go for this right now i i, I want to see my schema version that's why i open the registry it's okay okay so now we have what is the path the path is now after that we need to open this h key local machine have you seen this over there h key local machine yeah. In con under computer we have five keys. The third key we need to open expand it. H key local machine. Over there we have the option system. I need to expand the system in that case. Okay, the path I think so maybe it's cut. Okay, system. So we can go for system. After that we need to go to current control set. Okay. Over there I need to expand con current control set. Okay, current control set and then we go for services. Then we can go for services. Have you seen services? Okay, yeah. services. And then we down over there. We need to go for NTDS. 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 Have you seen NTDS over there? Yeah, down. Down. Yeah. NTDS. Yeah. In NTDS, exponent NTDS. Over there, we have, I think, parameters. Yeah. Click on parameters. Parameters. And you can see there in the down, we have seen the schema system version is. 87 2000. in 2016 Basically. right now 16 in, if, if we're using 2012 in that case our uh, uh, schema version is 69 r2 understood if you understand these things now i am showing you the practical how we can upgrade the dcs okay understood these things now okay so how we can see the now we have two things we one is upgrading the dc and one is migrating the dc Okay, upgrading means what? Upgrading means like uh, if I have a, a, sim, a one one server, I have only one system. Okay, I don't have multiple systems. I have only one server. So what I do? I just upgrade the schema. Okay. What I do? I just first upgrade the DC schema. Okay, and I can install the server 2016 software or install operating system in that, like we already did previously. The upgrading. Okay, or if you have like uh, for for uh, for migration what we need we need two servers you can say that this is the second server we have in that server what i do this is my 2016 server we have and i can i can imagine that this is my pdc okay this is my pdc imagine this is my pdc okay and i am becoming this to adc okay and what i do i transfer the rules and i becoming this adc to pdc p d and c so in that case i transfer my pdc in server 2016 we can do like this also understood you will understand these things now okay so this is what we have migration Okay, so we can do both the things today. Upgradation also and migration also. Okay, fine. For upgrading, what we need, we need one first, we need one 2012 server. Okay, so what I need to do first, I switch off this once. First, I power off this machine and I'm creating a new machine 
for Saudi 2012. Okay, so yeah, because we are we are already installed the Saudi 2016 servers in that case, so we're not able to migrate or upgrade it. Okay, so we need to go for lower versions first. So I just switch off. I uh, off this. I just make one server. You also do in your. You have uh, some 2012 image. No. No. Uh, give me your the, the drive. I'll give you 2012 image. So, there's there's too much difference between magnetic edition and magnetic. Yeah, they have a practical difference. I'll show you. No, like uh, the edition and uh, the VMs. On the VMs. Yeah, like if you have uh, PCs on the on the live migration, mm -hmm. on the PCs, mm -hmm. are they different from the DC migration? No, the same thing. The options okay. are same. Options are same. But we are, we are just only we are, we are doing in the virtualization, you are doing for the physical one. Same thing. Okay. So. So I just going to create huh? okay. 2012 VM. I'm to give 40 GB. You also you also create one 2012 VM. Okay. Uh, switch off your server uh, 2016 right now. Okay. Use only 12. Okay. So I'm using only 12 right now. ISO browse I. I give it to you, huh? The ISO image also. So I set the image over there, data, data in images. In images we have server 2012. Oh, it's an SQL. We need to go for server image. Pin. And okay. Now it's power on. Meanwhile, I copy. installation part okay. the same installation how we can you how you can go to 2016 okay the installation should be same it's not that much difference okay so once it's installed I pause uh, resume the video okay I just pause the video now the same see you can see that the same uh, we, we can go for data center over there data center with GUI okay like this I'm gonna click on next now uh, accept this, next, customize, and we need to occupy 40 GB. Simply click on next now. Not going to install. Okay, so meanwhile, I pause the video. Once this come in, then I. Okay, so now see, uh, the server 2012 is installed now. Okay, might be your, yours also installed. Okay, the password is same uh, ABC8123. Okay. No, I'm. I'm uh, uh, Doing this same, you can do also. I'm getting this. This a uh, uh, DC. Okay, so uh, so once first I need to. Oh, sorry, configure the IP address and uh, then becoming a DC. The so same thing. Okay, uh, give another DC, huh? Okay, sir. Another name, of the DC. A different forest student. So the IP address. And uh, 
Je peux manger tout. Tiens, yeah. when you install your machine, install my for me. And the virtual machines. For your? GNS3. GNS3? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't know how to do it. Okay, so 192, 168, 1 dot, uh, 20. I, I becoming a new forest in that. Okay, it's a separate thing, separate forest. So I give IP address 192, 1 dot, 20 and 20. So the, I'm becoming this for, for parent domain controller now. Okay. okay. I'm becoming. You can give uh, the IP address, okay. Uh, how many? Uh, you can start with 20. Okay. 192, 168, 1 dot, 20 gives. Okay, so give effort yes also. 1.20 okay 1.20 192.168 1.20 okay i am going to change the name also this is 1.20 yeah 1.20 192.168 1.20 No, 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 one dot one. It's a separate forest. Go for separate forest. Okay, I'm not I'm mixing the forest right now. Okay, I just off the firewalls, I change the computer name. Okay, and then it's going to restart once. One dot Yeah, okay, I just restart it once. I change the computer name, I, I switch off the firewalls. I give the IP address also. Now we are going to uh, becoming this server as a PDC again. Okay, a new PDC you can say that, a different PDC. So yeah, right now you are using avtar.com, na? Yes. Oh, avtar.com. Com. Com. So change the name now. Okay. So change. Then give avtar.com here again. No, no, no. It's a different forest, huh? So we have only one avtar.com in the whole. Room. Change the name also, change the name also. Yeah, click on OK. No, no, no. We need to becoming a DC. OK. We, we need to go for separate, separate forest. Separate forest means like uh, we right now we're using, uh, right, right now my, my one is set.local, right? So I imagine that is a new company. OK, separate company. So over there imagine abc.com is a new company. Or abc dot local is a new company. Yeah, we use the same IP address. Yeah, we, we use the same network. Yeah, but we have a different different domain forest also. Okay, they are also using the same network, but they have a different different forest. We can do this also. Okay, so uh, imagine by in, in real world, every forest has there has their different uh, networks and IP addresses. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so uh, I'm going to install AD services and DNS services and I'm promoting this server as a parent domain controller, a separate domain, separate server, separate forest. Okay. I'm not mixing with this server with my previous setup. Okay, so that's why I go for a separate thing. Yeah, yeah, recording is running.
polish. Yeah, promoted now. Okay, so it's a new forest. Choose last one. Okay, so over there also I am using a new forest. Now I am over there abc dot local. I'm using abc dot local. So new forest. It's working, it's working still right now. Okay, so it's choosing this and then click on next. So next again, next. Okay. 
Kenneth de Nelson que nos dijo que aquí uno de estos servers existen Hmm. Okay, now it's going to restart once, and then our DC is becoming. Restart. Okay, it's restarting automatically. Downloaded this last last step. Which one? The Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Yeah. Okay. Deployment Toolkit. Ready here. Yeah. Mm. This is. This is also uh to do. This is also with the help of this. Also, we can deploy in the OS and all. This allows us to deploy like uh, applications. Yeah, applications also. Uh, softwares also. So by default, you have to download it and integrate it to the server. Yeah. Right. How okay, can you do it? We need to install it first and on the servers and then we can configure everything. Okay. So it's a very big... Uh, install it to the server. Yeah, install it on the server and then we can... Okay, it's really starting. Start once. Please wait. <coughs> now see. Okay, this is my domain controller now. Okay, now first we see what's the version of this schema over there. Okay. What's the version we are using right now? So we can open run reg edit reg edit the command. Okay, this chapter is open. Now where we can go for HK local machine and after that we have a system, then current control set, then services, then over there we have NTDS. NTDS we can explain over there parameters. You can see that right now we are using 69 schema version. Okay, see, 69 is there. Okay, so what I need to do now, first I need to upgrade the schema. Okay, so how we can upgrade the schema? See once over there, then you can do. See once over there. First, I need to upgrade the schema. Okay, so how we can upgrade the schema? First, I set the 16 image over there. Okay, so I just open uh, settings in this VM and I can insert server 2016 image. Because uh, AD not have the information about schema versions. Okay, so if I want to upgrade the schema, first I need to assign my server 2016 image on this server. Okay, if I already did, 
so uh, if i open my server image we have the option over there option name is ad preparation ad prep the folder is there by default you can see that if i open uh, open my dvd and over there we have the option uh, in uh, in cd support in support we have ad prep okay okay in that we need to run two commands okay so after after running these commands your schema is automatically upgraded okay it contains all see you have the schema version schema files these are all the schema files it contains by your ad prep so where we can need to go we need to go there 87 so these all schema files are copied when we run those commands in my server so i need to go where i need to go where like see i go you first i need to assign uh, assign the cd means insert the cd now i go to cmd over there i need to go cmd okay i just make the font large that you able to see properly okay no this one is okay okay now when i need to first need, i need to move my cd rom so where is my cd rom it's in d drive so i go to my d okay i'm in d right now now we go for cd uh, in d we go for support folder cd support and then i go to cd ad prep prep over there i can okay it means i uh, right now i am in this folder if i open my d drive and you can see the support over there we have this ad prep so i insert it in this folder i i am right now i am in this folder so what command i need to run i need to run two commands over there first command is i write write down ad prep 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 dot exe space slash forest forest prep first i prepare my forest okay so i just hit or enter you can see that it's running something so it is typing me c to run this i click on c and enter it so you can see that what did they do they are getting the schema to right now my schema version is what 69 they are going to upgrade my schema version in 287 okay so you can see that see it's upgrading my schema version okay right now it's uh, uh, something about so you can see that they showing me the command has been completed successfully the ad prep schema updated successfully the the forest wide information now we turn another command this time we need to upgrade my domain also so we can go for domain prep domain prep and right you can see that ad prep successfully updated the domain wide information also okay now we can check once what my schema version is right now so i open i close this one i open my uh, cmd uh, sorry registry edit reg sorry reg edit okay and you can see that i just refresh it once i need to refresh once i go up 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 and up okay i just okay so i just uh, go for refresh once over there okay now again i go for go for hk system and then current control set and then services and then we have entities expanded over their parameters you can see that right now still they not didn't showing you only 69 it automatically there okay it's mean while it's not a refresh right now when it's refresh they showing you 87 uh, uh, over there yeah means it's it's a refresh till now so when it's refresh they showing you 87 see you can see that 87 is also showing there schema version is 87 we have uh, before it's not showing you 87 before it's doing you only 69 now right now it's 87 is there now i'm going to install the uh, server upgrading the server now os understood these things okay we already we already see how we can upgrade the server so if you see that again if i showing you you can just double click on this Okay, you need to run this DVD and see the window setup is started. Preparation for upgradation. So you know that data center is upgraded data center. So right now I don't want to download any updates. Simply click on next now. See it checks everything is fine in your PC. Okay, if everything is fine, it's upgrade thing upgrade the system to 2016 now.
it's a it's a very you can say that it's a very very good task like uh, when you are in a good position like right right when you are in l3 or l4 position okay so you are the person who upgrade the domain controllers who upgrade the networks who migrate the domain controllers networks and everything okay it's a level 3 or level 4 type of work okay you're not able to see easily those things okay so you can see that see they gives you all the uh, addi additions so we can go for data data center evaluation addition okay click on next simple accept this okay nothing choose what you want to keep okay there is no option for keeping the things you will be able to manage your window settings everything will be deleted including files application settings okay keep personal applications okay let's see click on next yes now making sure you are ready to install the things so let's see servers yeah system in that we have current control set Okay. 
Okay. Understood these things? Okay. Now this is the what we have to do. Okay. So understand these things now. You don't want to upgrade it. You have already upgraded the OS. Okay. You don't want it. We need a separate. Uh, we need this also. Okay. So uh, able to understand these things now? Okay. So this is what we have. Okay. So you want to upgrade? You want to upgrade also. Preparing this. Click on. Yeah. Not. Not right now. Click on next. And going to upgrade. Okay. Understood? Yes. You will understand these things now? Yeah. Okay. So, this is what how we can upgrade the DC. Okay. Clear? Yes. Okay. So, let's talk about other things now. Okay. Meanwhile, it's upgrading. It takes time. Okay, it takes full in, uh, full in, uh, full operating system installation and everything. So it takes time. So meanwhile, we do other things. Okay. So uh, so till now, what we do, we we read this topic till now. Overview of ADS uh, advanced ADS deployments and uh, overview of uh, now we start with the trust. Okay, domain and trust. So choose the edition over here. Question is what is ADS trust? T R U S T trust. What is ADS trusts? Okay, so trust is what uh, you can say that it's a it's a it's a type of services or it's it's a type of uh, type of uh, component in our, in our AD 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 service AD uh, environment. Okay, what is that? <coughs> So it, you can say that it is used to enable enable uh, access access to resources in different domain networks. Number one in different domain networks. Okay, it is used to enable access to resources in different domain networks. But what, what, what does it mean? It means like if I open uh, another paint or uh, if I go to the diagram, like imagine this is my domain network one, this is my domain network one, and this is my domain network two. Okay, like imagine we have parent domain network and child domain network. We have two types of domain networks in this. This is my parent domain network. Okay, and this is my child domain network. Okay, now imagine that over there I have I have some users. Okay, it they the these both networks are connected with each other, with the, you can say that with uh, with wires or van link van link or something something you can say that. So over there we have imagine we have van link. With the help of one van link we can connect these two networks okay now imagine that we have some users over there like imagine i have i have some user okay i have a hundred users which are running in my uh, uh parent domain network and i have 200 users which are running in my uh, child domain networks now one of my user wants to access the resources of child domain network so he can if we have trust relationship between these two networks if we have trust relationship we can able to means we uh, means your parent domain network is uh, network users is able to access uh, the sources of child domain networks and child domain network also users also able to access parent domain network in this case. Okay. Like, uh, if one shell is 
they will be back on in that aspect. Yeah, exactly. So in that in that case, what we need, we need one, we need a trust relationship. Trust relationship. Relationship. Okay, we need to we need to create trust relationship between these two, between these two uh, domain networks. If we have trust relationship, then these uh, parent domain network users are able to access child domain network, and child domain network users are able to access parent domain network. Understood? Okay. So uh, when we create uh, different different domain networks, some trust relationships are automatically created. Okay, or some we need to create it manually. Okay. We have so many types of trust relationships in my in in, in the AD environment in domain network. So some are automatically created, okay, or some are created by administrator manually. Okay, understood these things now. Okay, so uh, like why we use trust relationship to access the resources to a different different networks, different different domain networks. Okay, so now if we're talking about the trust relationships we have. Types of types of trust relationship. Type of trusts you can say that. Number one, we have parent-child trust. Okay, parent-child parent-child trust is automatically created. Number one, because it, it, this this child it, this this trust is created between the parent. Domain network and child domain network. If you have PDC and CDC in that domains, we have parent child trust. And it's automatic. It's created automatically. So a user in parent domain can yeah. access. Exactly. Like you, you one thing I will uh, I'll show you previous uh, yes uh, previous classes also. One I one one thing I showing you, show showed you in that case uh, that uh, we when we create PDCs and CDCs, so with the help of PDC we able to manage CDC. Yeah, Remember? Yeah, but we have the help of CDC. We we able to see only PDC. We not able to modify anything. Yeah. We able to read only. Yeah. So it means we are able to access the both the both the in both the ways, no? Okay. So in that case, it means they have their trust between them. Okay. So it is created automatically. Okay. And it creates between. You can say that it creates. Between parent and child domain network, domain networks. Okay, okay, let's go next. Okay, so parent-child trust it is created automatically and it creates between parent and child domain networks. Understood? Number second. Uh, uh, this sorry, this trust has transitive trust. You can say that this is also known as a transitive, transitive or two-way trust. This is a two-way trust. By default, it creates a two-way trust. Two-way trust means both the domains are able to access both uh, uh, each other resources. Okay. Number third, it is a Transitive trust. Now, what is the meaning of transitive? Transitive T R U S T trust. T R U S T. Transitive means if A is equal to B mm -hmm. and B is equal to C. Okay. Like if like we have we have three domains. I I trust uh, uh, like this. Imagine I showing you. Okay, if I if I mathematically B is equal to C, so C is equal to automatically like this. Or if I go for uh, I, uh, as a domain administrator, I'll showing you. So it look like this. Like imagine if I have if I have uh, three domain networks, so three uh, DCs over there like this. Okay, and this is my uh, PDC. Okay, this is my CDC hyphen zero one. Okay. Uh, okay. We have this is uh, CDC. We have like open top, and this is my uh, another one. Go to top again. Okay. This is my uh, CDC two. Okay. So over there we have 
two parental trust, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, between this, between this two server so domain also, and between these two server domain also. Okay, fine. Now imagine that this is this is you can say that this is A is equal to this is B. This is B. Okay, and imagine that now we have another uh, child. We have sub child. You can say that over there we have sub child. Under child we can create another child. Okay, so you can say that it's my sub child. You can say that sub CDC. Okay, so this also uh, uh, trust between this also. This is the child child over there. So you can say this is the C. So we don't want to create uh, trust between C is equal to A. We, I don't want to create trust between sub CDC and PDC. It's automatically trusted. So that is known as transitive trust. If A is equal to B, B is equal to C, C is equal to automatically A. We don't want to create trust between C and A. It's automatically trusted. Understood? Okay. But that is how we have a transitive trust. Okay. Now we have another trust. The other trust uh, name is um okay tree root trust tree root trust tree root trust okay it is also created automatically automatically okay it creates between uh Parent and three DC. Okay. Understood. Mm -hmm. Okay, like this. If I uh, go for like this, if I delete this, like imagine this is what we have. This is my parent. This is my parent DC is running over there. Okay, and we have a three DC over there. Imagine this is the parent DC. This is the name is uh, right now ABC. Okay, we are using set dot local. Okay, and over there I am using. No, no, no. Uh, said UK dot UK. The tree one. Okay, I, I change the name switch. So between these two, we have one trust. Between these two also, we have one trust. Okay. One unit trust. Yeah. Between these two also, we have a trust. But this trust is known as which one? Tree root trust. This two is trust. Like from this account, access this account from this. Yeah, exactly. So this is a TDC. This is my TDC. Okay, this is my parent DC. Okay, then this is my uh, PDC and this is my TDC. Remember, yeah. we can create TDCs. Okay, so this is my TDC. Okay, so between these two also we have a tree root trust. Understood? Understand this is? Yeah. Okay. Now, number third, we have forest trust. Now, what is the meaning of forest trust? Forest trust, it is create create created by administrator manually means manually manually. It, it, it is need to create manually. Okay, it creates between creates it creates between uh, between two forest two different forest between two different forests like how like between forest means like uh, imagine that like see this is this is my forest imagine okay like this is my forest this is my whole forest okay and this is another forest you can see that like this okay now uh, uh, we have in this i'm using uh, set dot local i have so many branches everything everything is there this is a simple this is a, uh, this is a, a different company you can say that or there is set dot local private limited this is the this is one company is there okay this is one company i have okay and this is not another company you can say that like this is imagine uh, abc something ABC uh, PWD LTD like this. Okay, so over there I am using 
uh, abc.com domain and over there I am using set.local which is the set company we have okay like this okay so if I want that okay now now we both we have both have different different organizations but we need to go for collaborate something we are we are merging the right now the organizations are merging right now so I want that I want that I want that that uh, I want that the uh, I have imagine if I have hundred users so my users are able to access this is uh, their resources and this users are able to access their resources so for this we need Copa Forest Trust okay Forest Trust is always remember one thing Forest Trust in Forest Trust you can go for transitive as well as non transitive also you can go for one way or two way it's up to you you can go Forest Trust one way or two way also it's my choice. The trust which are automatically created, those trusts are automatically goes for two-way trust. But we can define over there one way or two-way. When we get manually the things. Understood these things now? Okay. Now the fourth one we have parental tree root. What we discussed till now? Parental trust, tree root trust, and forest trust. Now uh, another one we have. External trust. External. External trust. Okay. Now external trust means that uh, external trust. Like how I give you the example of external trust. See, it's a very, very, very good trust. <laughs> So you can see that like see if I go for have you seen triangle over there? Okay. I need triangle. Triangle. Here it is triangle. Yeah. Yes. So imagine that this is my uh, okay. this is my this is one of my forest. Okay. I have some different different domains. Okay. Fine. This is these are attached with this, this attached with this. Okay, it's attached with this. We have some van links and we can connect it to each other. Okay, imagine that this is my uh, this is my PDC parent domain network. This is my child domain network, and this is again my child domain network. Okay, and this then we call we call this is one of my forest. Okay, we have three domains. We have a, a, a different forest we are running. Okay, so over there I am running. Imagine this is my uh, set dot local. Okay, you can see the set dot local. Okay, like this. Understood? Fine. Now we have another. We have another forest. Imagine we have another forest. This is also is a very small company. Over there we have only uh, no. We have two domains on that. Okay. Again, I have a triangle. So this is. Where is my triangle? Over there, I have a PDC, and in that under, we have only one child. That's it. I have only one child. That's it. We have only two domains in this, so it's connected with each other. And imagine that over there, uh, this is my PDC, and this is my C region. Okay, and uh, this forest is known as abc.com. This is the separate the forest we have abc.com. Understood. Now what I want, I want that my this CDC, my this CDC, CDC one. You can see that this is my CDC one, and this is my CDC two. So I want that my this CDC, which one? This one, this CDC. I want my this CDC is able to access only this network. That's it. Okay. So the only thing to access a PDC of abc.com. Yeah. Like uh, I don't want I don't want to create a forest trust between these two. Because if I am creating a forest trust, all the domain networks are accessed with each other. I want only my set.local CDC is able to access my abc.local CDC. Or not CDC. I want my set my set.local uh, CDC is able to access only my 
abc.localpdc that's it i don't want to do any kind of uh, uh, communication okay for that what we need we need external request understood you will understand these things yeah it's next me confuse about now confusing now the, the question is that that uh, why i'm not getting cdc uh, why i'm not getting forest trust over there why because if i'm getting forest trust between these two forest mm -hmm. it means once i'm getting forest trust it means my all my domain net uh, all my domain networks in my site dot local are able to access all domain network of abc.com or abc.com all domain networks are able to access my site dot local so i don't want to do this i want that only one network cdc one is able to access my abc.com pdc that's it i want i want the communication only these two these two networks okay i don't want to i don't want the communication to all the networks with each other so that's why i go for external trust external trust means if i cross my forest and i create a trust between another forest in a, in a specified domain okay in that case we can use external trust Understood. Fine. So, uh, like this, we can do also. Sometimes company does this also. Okay. Some highly qualified detail, uh, uh, high high confidential information I have, but I don't want that. Uh, some other organization access my whole uh, all my networks. I want some other organization access only one network. Obviously, the IT and management. So, I don't want the IT guys to. Have resources over. Yeah, so that's why I told you now. But like, I don't want that. Uh, I don't want that. Sitical sit dot local. All domain networks is able to access PDC, ABC, PDC. I want only this. That sit as uh, CDC one is only able to access PDC. Means in this domain, if you have hundred users, all those hundred users are able to access this ABC dot com PDC, etc. Okay, so that is what we have external trust. Okay, so. Okay, so external external trust is also it is it is also create created by administrator means manually. Okay, and it is also two way or one way. It's up to you that what kind of trust you want to do. Okay, and it always and it always a non transitive trust yeah it is a non transitive trust it, it means a is equal to b b is equal to c so we need it's not mandatory that c is equal to a in that case we need to create trust c is equal to a if i want okay so it's a non transitive trust okay understand these things chart Okay, in the last trust we have shortcut trust. Okay, the last one shortcut. We have five trust till now. Fifth one, three this, and this is the fourth one, and the last one is fifth one. Fifth one is shortcut. Shortcut trust. Understand this also is also very some 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 confusing. <laughs> some confusing maybe you are able to. So understand this also very clearly. Now I just remove this. This now still I have a forest. Okay, two forest. Now uh, in this what we have, I am creating. Uh, I am I am creating uh, uh, trust between these two. I am using forest trust in, the, in this case. I have a forest trust between my PDC and PDC. So we have a forest. I already created forest trust in this domain. So both of the forest. Are uh, working fine means both of both are the domain uh, means both the forest domain networks are accessing their resources. Okay, so we have a forest trust. We have already created forest trust in this organization now, in this scenario. Okay, we have a forest trust between these two forest. Now it means what? It means that both the both both uh, both forest domain networks are able to access uh, with each other. Okay. 
Regional means if I am going for two way. If I am going for one way, so it's only for incoming and outgoing. Okay. Now what I now what I want uh, the problem is that if imagine now if this CDC one is able to access this CDC. If my CDC one set dot local CDC one is able is want to access abc dot set dot abc dot com set CDC, so it's very different. It's very difficult. Why is difficult? Why because first it goes to their PDC. Okay, he goes. He sends the network to uh, this PDC. Okay, and then it sends network to CDC. So it's very long way. Very long way. Okay. So I don't want to do. I want. I don't want to disturb every time to my PDC. I don't want to do this. I want that. Okay. I want that this CDC one is directly access to this CDC. If we have forest trust, if we have forest trust, so I want that my set dot dot local CDC is able to access directly to ABC dot com CDC. Okay. Understood. Clear. So for that we need what? Between these two CDC, we can create shortcut. Shortcut twist. And that's all. Okay. Short. Okay. So like this. So if I if I if I want to, uh, you can say that if I want to save time, if I want to save the network bandwidth conjunction everything, so we can go for shortcut twist. So if I go for that way, the long way. So first, it takes time. It's it's move or disturb every everybody. Yeah, maybe some maybe of course maybe the this band length is slow or maybe I have using this band length is fast. So that's why I go for shortcut in that case. So, but can you use both at the same time so that if one link fails, the second one will take more power? Yeah, you can say that. We can do that, but uh, but if 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 PDC and PDC trusses fail, mm -hmm. so you are not able to use shortcut in that case also. It is mandatory that you have a forest trust in between. Okay, fine. So that is what we have a shortcut trust. So again, if you are talking about the shortcut trust, so shortcut trust means that it is a, it is again it's a non-positive trust. Okay, it is also first created by administrator. It's not a, it's not created automatically. We need to go for manually create this trust manually. Manually, okay. And uh, number second, it is also two way or one way. It's up to you. What what type of communication you want? It is it always a non positive. Understood. Very yes, thanks. So uh, this is the key information you want. Because these are all the informations we have. Okay. So uh, like this, you need to go. Understood these things now. So for practical, what we need now? We need uh, two servers. Only two servers. For the first yeah, one. for 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 yeah. Like if I if I go for this one, the for parent child, child we need two servers. Mm -hmm. For tree root also we need two servers. Yes. For forests also we need two servers. Yes. Two okay. PDC, two, two PDC, two different different forests we need. Okay. okay, and for external trust we need three servers. One parent, one child, one child and one different child. forest okay. parent. And we need for shortcut also we need four. Oh yeah, we can we can four four. Then you have to be there. I'm not able to uh, be there. Yeah, okay, yeah. so uh, like this, we 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 go for that. Okay, so shall we start practical? Yes. Okay, so we start with the uh, this one. Okay, the parent child first. Okay, for parent child, what we need? We need PDC and CDC, two domain controllers. Okay, so I just open my two domain networks. We need parent and child. Okay, so I just Switch off this. It's okay. I just turn off this. Okay. I turn off this. We can see that how we can install it. Okay. So I just turn off this now. I on my 2016 servers now. Okay. So server one, server two. We have two servers.
I pause my video once I start the servers and then start. Okay. Okay, so as you know, you, we need uh, two domain two domain networks, parent domain network and child domain network for parent child trust. Okay, so so I have two servers right now. This is my server one, and it's already becoming a parent domain PDC. And I have server two also. Let's see. Okay, both are okay. So my parent DC is there. PDC is logging successfully. I'm going to start my CDC also. Okay. So I don't have CDC right now. So first I need to make CDC. Okay. On my server too. And then we can see whether we have a whether the trust is automatically created or not. Parent child trust. Parent child trust. Parent child trust. Okay. So this is so so I have two servers right now. Okay. So in server one I I already became my PDC. It says it's my PDC. So I need to uh, I need to make this server as a CDC. Okay. So how we can go for that? Yeah, I need to first install AD services and need to configure it. No, I have this removed now that time. We, we we created previously but we removed. Yeah, we did it Yeah, we removed it. See. So I just I just I just changed the name once. Which is the child DC. Okay. No, we need to install AD services and promote the server. It's becoming a DC. Okay, it's not a member server. Once it's restart and then I just change the name. Okay. Once it's restart and then I just pause the video. Once it's restart, I resume it. So I start now, so I'm going to get CDC. So this is server one, server two. Okay. Now I just log off once. ABC and part three. Okay. No. I hope the name is changed. I think the are already installed. I need to promote this server only. AD is already installed in it. I need to go to promote. Choose second option. For child.
Let's choose the second option, click on child domain. Parent domain name I said dot local child when I give the name CDC. Okay. Click on change, look at the credentials. Set dot local slash administrator password is ABC about three. Okay, for next. Okay, so I don't want to choose global catalog. I go for some of those data too. Let me see part three. So click on next. Okay, click on next. Tap on me in the first name. Okay, click on next again. Next, just open it. Is it okay? Here is the pass from this part. Okay, this part the video, meanwhile, it's all. Once it's restarted, resume. Now see my uh, CDC is created now. Okay, so now if I if I log in with my CDC, my domain um, child domain controller, we can see that the parent child trust is automatically created. Okay, because that uh, that is the only trust which is automatically created. So parent child you can see that it's automatically created. It's showing you. Where we can see, we can uh, we can see uh, the option is Active Directory to Win Trust. Okay, with the help of this component, we can manage trust. Okay, so let's log in once. Wait, I check. Wait, wait, wait. See there. Wait, wait, wait. I just come. Just come. Let's wait. Wait for this. Okay. Let's see there once. See if if I if I go to uh, start, and then we can go for admin tools. Admin tools. You can go for domain trust. Okay. Click on that. Domain and trust. Now we can see that in set dot local under set dot local we have two CDC and child one. So previously I have made child one. Okay. Now we have CDC dot set dot local. So if I right click on that, go to properties, my set uh, CDC dot local, and click on trust. You can see that one trust is automatically there. 
and they told me that this is a sit dot local and the the trust with with you is sit dot local and it can this is your parent child parent uh, uh, domain click on properties you can see that it's a trust type is this domain is for cdc parent domain is child sit dot one sit dot local and this is the domain and the the right uh, trust type is parent child trust and it's a transitive and direction of this is two way okay you can you can see this information same information from uh, server from your uh, this server also from server so one also okay so if i log in it so like this this is what we have parent child trust understood okay so this is what we have parent child trust the so parent child trust is automatically created okay now same information you can find with the with within uh, in pdc also okay so see this is my pdc so if i am trying to open uh, the same component Okay, go to uh, admin tools. Over there we have domain and trust. So click on domain and trust again. So over there also you can find the same information that oh. see. Like if I right click on the set dot local, go to properties, and you can see that in trust we have they have two tiles: cdc dot set dot local or cdc tile hyphen one dot set dot. So can't you remove the the one that you know anymore using? It's automatically removed because this this one uh, the, the the server is not there now. Okay. Child hyphen zero one is not there. Okay. So okay. So yeah, yeah, right now it's still showing you. It's a it's a previous. It's not updated still now. But uh, we have a new one also. This is the new one. Okay. 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 Yeah, so you can see that uh, this this domain is set dot local and the child domain is cdc dot local and the child plus name is parent child trust okay. and it's two way. Can and we make any modification over there? No. Change the name. No, 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 no uh, not there. You're not able to do anything. Ah, okay. okay, fine. You will understand these things now. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we have. This, this is a by default. It's this trust is automatically created. You can see that. Understood now? Okay. <coughs> Next we have three root trust. Okay, so I just pause. One. So what? So what we uh, studied this? We we see the practical parent child trust. Okay, we see three root trust and forest trust. Uh, next class. Okay, external trust. Next class. Okay. So this is what we have trust. So understand the trust relationships. Yeah. Okay. We can. Uh, why we use trust relationship? Because if you want to access resources to two two or more than two different domains, in that case we can use. Trust relationship. Okay. So I just stop this video now. Okay,